the the problems that people come in with when it comes to fitness. I mean, and let's 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 name a couple, right? You know, like people come to the gym or they come to a class because they're overweight, they want to lose weight, right? Their joints hurt, they don't like how they look in the mirror, they don't like how they feel, right? Uh, chronic chronic tension, chronic pain, inflexible. Have you guys had experience with any of these? Issues that have been a motivator? All of the above. <laughs> All when of I, the above. When I started um, like three years ago, whenever it was, three, I forget now, COVID, I definitely, um, I felt like I was at the worst condition I'd ever been in. Uh, weight wise, cardio wise, everything wise. And I definitely felt like shit. Um, and so that was. That was it. Uh, you know, I, I think hopefully when I went to the gym, started going to the gym, I, I tried really not to think about losing weight. I tried to think about being better. But, mm. you know, bottom line was I didn't like the way I looked and I didn't like the way I felt. It, yeah. And, and I also felt this real urgency that I was getting older and getting worse. And that equation is really bad. Like it just mm. goes down here. When you get older, you get worse if you don't do anything about it. So I felt like I was, I, Robin, I didn't think he was bad as me, but you know, I, I definitely was like 40 pounds, 30, 40 pounds overweight yeah. and, and just crap. And I knew that if I didn't do anything about it, I was going to be like three years down the road today, I was going to be like in really bad shape health wise and mentally. So yeah, I mean, that, that was a big deal. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, and I love what you just said about it. Absolutely not. Right. I've been doing the work. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I love what you just said about you as you get older, you feel like if you don't have these habits in place, you start to feel like it, you're falling apart. I feel like, you know, if, if this situation, if this cycle continues, you know, who knows what health problems are going to be in just the normal. Wonderful. It's not like you think you're falling apart. You are falling apart. You're Why right. you have to fall apart if you don't do things with it. <laughs> yeah. And you get yeah. all fail and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Well, and you know, if you're worried about your health while well, you're still in relatively good health, but you see things taking a turn or heading in the wrong direction, then you know, that's just a sign that you're setting yourself up for. So some like really serious problems in, in, down the road, like all of the major issues, health issues that are that we deal with in this country, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, right? Like these are all uh, just the cumulative effect of poor health over a long period of time. You didn't just, you didn't just wake up with diabetes, right? You guys know this, right? My, you're with me. Well, there yeah. are some versions of diabetes that you do inherit. So that's true. Yeah, type one diabetes you do you do are born I, with, I, I, but adult onset well. you don't. Yeah, and, and and inflammation, right? That's kind of an underlying factor, and so people come in and they this is the situation that you're that you're dealing with when you come in, and you think like, oh, all right, so I need to. I just need to get back to the gym. I need to lose this weight. I need to start eating better. Yada, yada. I need to do some stretching, right? And then that's going to solve my problems. But I'm going to submit to you guys that this isn't actually the real problem. All these things that we're talking about are symptoms of the real problem, which is that we're stressed. And maybe not, we're, we're maybe not stressed in, in the sort of like, mental like fight or flight like i must like feeling intense pressure all day long but there's an even more sinister version of stress which is this chronic low-grade stress that we all experience in first world living deadlines and schedules and you guys are entrepreneurs so you so you have a responsibility you know no one's just cutting you a check each every two weeks like that's that's a That's the choice made to produce on your own. And 
Uh, and not only does this have an effect mentally, but this has a profound effect physiologically. The tension and the, uh, the pain and the poor sleep and, you know, the habits that get in the way of healthy habits, getting to the gym on time, the stories that prevent us from doing these things consistently are, I would argue, a result of stress. Because if I wasn't stressed out, then I would be doing all the things that I know I should be doing. You guys agree so far? Yeah, you, 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 you know, you fall into bad habits of how you maintenance your body and your mind. And, you know, once you go into a circle, you tend to go deeper into it before you can pull yourself out of it. Well, it's always about the habit, right? I, I find mm -hmm. when I start, like lately I've lost my conditioning, my cardio anyhow. And the more like I'm not dealing with it, the more I start to not care as much about like being vigilant of keeping myself in that, you start to buy into your own failure sometimes, both mm. your eating, exercise wise. And it's kind of where I am right now. I'm just I'm, I'm maintaining, but I lo I've lost like the real edge. Before COVID, I was really knife edge, and now I'm just kind of like hanging. And that's better than most people, but it's not good enough for me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> nice. Have your own set of standards. That's good. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you get into this vicious cycle that you just described where there's, there's some stress uh, which is present in your life, uh, which then pre prevents you from doing things that are going to help you to alleviate that stress. So then you become more stressed out. And then the gap just widens and it continues to widen. And uh, you, keep spinning, you keep spinning your wheels on this hamster wheel of productivity, but you're just busy. You're not actually getting anything done. So you're not making any progress in any particular direction, which is stressing you out more. So you run on the hamster wheel even more, which makes you more stressed out. And this, then he just said, you just like dig your own grave, right? So it's, so. it's so great. Like when you do things like whatever you have in store for us today, or when we do Raquel yoga, or when I used to do insanity workout. What's really cool about these endeavors is you're giving your brain a complete respite from that stress. If you really yeah. dive into it the right way, it's not only is it really good for your body, but I, I used to love insanity for an hour because there was nothing else I ever thought about except I was in that moment. And if you got out of that moment, you couldn't do the work. So it was so great to have a mental break and yoga should should be the same way where you just have a complete break from stress you're not thinking about you shouldn't be thinking about the deadlines or the work or anything you should be thinking about the motion and the movement so it's kind of like a double win right? for sure yeah or a triple because right yeah yeah you're you're creating the presence you're rewiring your brain and you're uh, dealing with the effects of that stress on your body and mind. And, um, and you're creating a new reality for yourself to live in. But the problem is that few people ever get there, like you said. Few people are stuck on this side where they haven't even been able to formulate this habit and feel that effect. Otherwise, they'd be in this class right now. And so there's something even deeper than that. And I'm going to, I'm going to submit to you guys that even beneath, you know, beneath the inflammation and being overweight and not liking how you look and feel and then underneath, and then there's stress underneath that. And then there's something even deeper underneath that, which is that you're scared. Because there's a reason that these stressful stories tend to gain credence in your head as you move through your day. I don't know, in my life, and as I'm thinking about the day, the reason that I'm stressing out about stuff and the reason that I'm setting all these expectations and these to-do lists and uh, the need to perform is because I'm just afraid of what happens if I don't. Well, 
animals are scared because they need to hunt. They need to rather oh, have predators. I and mean, we all have motivating things in our life to keep mm -hmm. us safe. Sometimes, maybe sometimes being a little scared is better than being complacent and unaware. I'm not, I'm not sure I would use the word scared. I would use the word worried. You know, and it's still stressful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I worry about, you know, the next paycheck or worry about whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's a, that's a fine word to use. Stressful. Very stressful. Very stressful. Very worrisome. But doing yeah. a to do this, doing like you said, doing it to a list of it's actually goal setting. And goal setting could be considered positive because you're giving yourself some structure and a roadmap for success. And that can help alleviate stress. If, as you check off everything on that list. It's a good, it's a feeling of accomplishment. And it's also a feeling of let, letting weight off of you. Like I got that done. I no longer have to think about that. I, I definitely go through that. There are things that I let pile up that I don't do. And it's so great when they get done. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, nice little momentary dopamine hit there. Check. Ah, it can be. I'd say, and I would, and I've made lots of these lists, right? And, but the, the, when they stop being useful is when I start making lists that are aiming me at, a, at, a, at the wrong target. If I'm just trying to, if I'm trying to cure symptoms, then a lot of times I'm going to make that list and I might check things off, but that list is growing at a faster pace than I can check things off. And that stresses me out. <laughs> I'm not attacking things at the root. That would, mm. yeah. yeah. Well, so, life is a balance, and this is part of balancing. Oh, yeah. It's putting your time in and trying to, like, make it better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so we're going to talk a lot more about this because there's, there's, there's a very uh, intricate conversation. But for today, I feel like the very first layer is to kind of, is to kind of peel back the onion a few, a few layers away from the, the symptoms that we all are trying to fix with our to-do lists and dig down to what's really going on underneath the worry and underneath the stress and address what's really going on, which is that we live in a state of fear and survival. Like you said, like we're all animals. But the, the problem with animals is that as soon as their, uh, their fight or flight response goes away, then they go back to uh, living in a an anabolic and a creative state, but we don't have that luxury because of all our luxury. Because of the to do list never ends and the grind never stops, and the acquisition and the acclaim and the status is a carrot on a stick. So. The real way I've discovered and discovering to make all this happen and make it stick and have fun doing it, to have fun on along this process of expansion and freedom and creation is to attack the root of fear and not just get in shape, not just have achieve fitness, but achieve fearless fitness. Fearless fitness. So that's the... Fearless fitness. So that's and so that's the frame that I'll introduce you to guys to and say that that's what we're about here, right? There's a lot of other places that you can go to get in shape, to find some fitness, but you want to really attack the root problem. And you want fearlessness. This is the place for that, and you'll find that you'll get in the best shape of your life along the way, just as a byproduct 